Happy Pie Day! Now, let's get the show going so I can eat some pie. Investor Beat starts now. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Hill, joined in studio by Ron Gross. You got a favorite pie? I'm Apple all the way. Banana cream. Banana cream. Without right. a doubt. Drop us an email, investorbeat at fool.com. Let us know your favorite pie. Let's wrap up the week uh, with some good retail news, yeah. which is always <laughs> wonderful. For a change. And, yeah. Always <laughs> wonderful and surprising. Yeah. And in this case, it's Ulta Salon. Uh, fourth quarter coming in better than expected. This is one uh, that you watch closely. What'd you think? Really strong numbers. One company that did not blame the weather, which is nice and refreshing. Also nice <laughs> and refreshing. Yeah, you saw comp store sales up 9.2%, which is really strong. Net income rose about 9%. Guidance for the future was good. Um, their online uh, retail is good. Always good to have multi-channel. So when the weather is bad, people can hop online and still, still buy products. Um, 675 stores. I think they still got a long growth runway ahead of them. Looks good. Uh, Multi-channel, that was one of the themes with Williams-Sonoma earlier in the week when they reported shares of Williams-Sonoma hitting an all-time high this week. Ulta Salon looking good, not quite in all-time high territory. What do you make of the valuation of this one? We actually recently sold it, and that was por for portfolio management reasons rather than reasons that we don't like the company. We actually like the company very much. Little pricey for me here, though. All right, let's move on to Target and the data breach problem of late last year just continues uh, to have ripple effects. This company came out yesterday and said that uh, Target's security system had alerted it to suspicious activity after they'd been hacked. But the company ultimately decided to ignore it. I know they get a lot of these warnings, but this just seems like yet another, I don't know, I go back to the drip, drip, drip. It right. just seems like they can't get past this one. What I'm wrestling with is whether, is this a public relations nightmare or is this really a management issue? When I, when I read this um, today, I, I was rather miffed. I was, I was really, is this really happening? Did they, they really um, let this go through even though they knew about it? I did some more research. I learned that companies of, of the size of Target can get hundreds of these notifications of potential um, viruses or malware um, from their spyware or malware vendors each day. And it wouldn't be a big deal for something like this to slip through. Now, in hindsight, it's a disaster and it's a really, uh, it's a shame, uh, of course. Um, but I'm still on the fence with whether how much blame I should really be placing uh, right at the feet of management. What do you think is the next domino to fall in terms of the stock? Because it seems like if they come out next quarter and we see any kind of significant drop in same store sales, can we automatically bring that back to this issue? It seems like next quarter, they really need a hit. I do think this is affecting business, which, which has a real um, economic impact to the company and to the stock. Um, I think long term, three years, five years out, do I still like this company and do I still like it as an investment? I think the answer is yes. Uh, people who think that the market is overheated got some wonderful news today in the form of Castlight Health, uh, which went public today. This is a company that offers health information online to help inform medical choices, reduce insurance costs. It was priced at $16 a share this morning. When it opened to the public, it was nearly $40 a share. What's, this is a company with $13 million in revenue last year, and now the valuation is about $3 billion? What is this? Exactly. It's troubling is what it is. Um, this kind of thing does worry me. Um, we've, this is the ninth IPO that's doubled on the first day of trading in the last nine months. Um, that is like bubble territory to me. There's uh, a lot of money out there chasing investments, and they're putting it into these companies at valuations that are sky high, sky high even before the pop. Pop, you have double sky high. Um, that does concern me. It does uh, an IPO bubble. I think is forming in certain sectors of the economy, um, and and that is 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 concerning. And I'd, I'd hate to see investors jumping in based on momentum. They think they're getting in on a good deal, and they end up getting burned in the end because they're buying really at the wrong prices. All right, that's going to do it for this week's action. Let's look ahead to next week. Give me a stock that you're watching. I'm watching X1, um, which is one of those 3D printing companies. 
properties um, that is talked about quite a bit. Uh, Barron's actually came out this week and said they're overhyped and they're overvalued. We've been watching X1 for a while. It's, it's down 48% from its high, which actually gets me interested because I think it's an interesting business because it focuses on the industrial side of the 3D printing business. They can actually do the printing in metals, and there is a lot of great industrial applications there. So they report next Wednesday. I'm going to be watching. All right, for Ron Gross, I'm Chris Hill. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.